Okay, you guys, I'm sorry I'm late doing this. I practiced this a little bit um, before coming on. I took some notes and everything because there there's quite a few topics that are going to go along with lesson two. There's a few principles. Um, so I've taken some notes to kind of keep us on track. Um, the very first principle that we're going to cover um, and the concepts behind lesson two is that we create our own experience. First and foremost, that is what we're really taking responsibility for today. We create our experience. So the first concept of this lesson is that our body is a communications device. And I often speak about this because what 98% of the world's population, myself included prior to making this flip, does is that we judge the outside reflection first and allow it to affect our inside, and then we get caught in this feedback loop. That's not the way it's supposed to work. That only fosters a sense of hopelessness, of helplessness, of, of separation, of, you know, it takes us away from knowing our power. The idea is that we must remember that our inside dictates our outside. And so in this particular case, what I want us to remember is that the very sense of our existence is nothing more than a feedback loop or a feedback mechanism that allows us to witness the choices we have made. That's it and that's all. And so we must understand what our body is trying to convey and we must understand what it is for and take control because it quite honestly, all it does is allow our perceptions to be projected outward so that we can feel them. Okay. That's the first principle in understanding that we create our experience. The next principle is that peace comes from alignment with the mind of God. So in this particular case, it is important to awaken that no one else creates our experience, but ourselves. It's important to understand that we are free always, that we are the creator of everything we choose to think, see, and experience. We are free at all times. And that in this particular case, the only thing that will ever imprison us is our perception of what we choose to consider imprisonment to be. That's it, okay? All right. The way of the heart is not about gaining power or making the world in our image, you know, whatever. That's not what it's about. It's rather assuming responsibility for the choices that we have made, for the experiences that we're having, and transcending the thoughts that are not in alignment with what is true. Our job is to find the constant. So in this particular case, it's going to be about comparison. What thoughts are not in alignment and what thoughts are in alignment? Thoughts that are not in alignment are going to be death, fear, guilt, depression, you know, all of these things that are not in alignment versus what is in alignment, peace, eternal life, fearlessness in everything. It is the understanding that we are perfectly free at all times and that every choice has been made by us and there's no other cause. You see, when we're busy trying to blame others for what is going on about us, we can't take control of the situation. And then we feel helpless. That's not the point. We're supposed to take control and we're really, really trying to embrace the fact that we are creators of our own experience and really, really let that sink into our bones, okay? This is really important because for a long time we have worked on, we have separated things, right? What's acceptable, what's not acceptable, we separate these things. And what we're trying to do or the eye of the needle that we're supposed to go through is to restore that childlike innocence and allow things to be no matter what happens. The truth is, it is real easy to be happy and peaceful and feel great when everything seems to be going our way. Like everything seems to be going our way. Yay, it's sunshine and roses and it's real easy. But how about true mastery? True mastery actually comes from the fact that no matter what is happening to you, you are at peace. 
So can you remain at peace when the bank is empty? Can you remain at peace when your business feels like it fell apart? Can you remain at peace when your friends seem to be coming in and out of your life? Can you remain at peace when your job doesn't seem to be going in alignment? This is the type of mastery that we're after. The coin term unfuckwithable is what we're after here. That's what we're going for. So when I chose these exercises and when I chose these things that we're doing, they're simple little things that we can do to really step back into the state to create as God creates, because that's what we're doing. How does God create? God simply said everything that he created is perfect. God didn't question whether it was good or not to make a solar system, whether it was good or not to make every individual. There's no question there. Simply declared things and there was no extra manifestation tools. There wasn't anything. But how do we get into that place where we can just declare something and have it be? Well, you get there from really taking into account that we must feel as if there is, um, it's not about needing anything. So no one said that we have to, uh, we need do nothing. That was principle of the exercise. We need do nothing. We need to get back to that state because as long as we feel that there's something that we need to do, we're not free to be. And God is the sense of being. That's what we're recapturing here. So that's what we're working on. And last and not least, I, I want us to remember something. We are all know the story of Christ and we are walking the path of Christ. So the story of Christ is that he was taught by the Essenes and he was asked to go into the wilderness. When he was asked to go into that wilderness, literally he physically placed his body in what he feared. He feared his survival. He feared separation. He feared isolation. All of the things that we feared, this is what he physically did. And that's what we're doing right now. You can consider all of these circumstances that come up in our, in our, in our life metaphorically in the same state. You know, these things that don't feel in alignment, these things that, you know, the, the argument with the spouse, the, whatever the things that we fear, we fear loss, we fear, we're doing the exact same thing. You guys, we're placing ourselves in the wilderness and remembering who we are. That's what we're after here. That's what this series of the heart is, the way of mastery, the way of heart, the way of transformation, the way of knowing. All of these are gradual steps that we're working on. Um, these are fairly extensive lessons, um, but in breaking them down into bite-sized pieces so that we can all apply these teachings and these things that we're going after. But that's really what I wanted to convey, you guys. Our exercises, they're important. They may not seem like they're important. They seem kind of silly. I get it. But I want us to get away from being inside our head and to get back into our heart sense because our heart knows the way, the way inside the kingdom, the way to flip our perception, the way to make sure that our inside is always dictating our outside. I want us to get away from miracle mindedness. I was at that stage. I'm leaving that stage now. I was at that stage where, you know, I declared somebody healed and they were healed and I was like, oh, it's a miracle. Or, um, you know, I whatever it was that was going on, I had that miracle mindedness. Well, guess what? That is just one stage. And there's, we're getting, we're evolving beyond that. I want us to get to the point where we just get used to being creators and not have that miracle mindedness. So in a way, I'm taking you guys on a journey with me and and getting away and as I evolve I'm hoping we evolve together and that we do this together and we take these steps together um, and I want us to get to the point where these things are just normal we declare something and it happens we declare something and it happens it's a freedom this is what we're after so do practice the exercises I know they seem a little silly but we're doing these incremental steps practice these affirmations in front of the mirror Practice this sense of knowing. Really embrace the fact that your body and your sense of existence is a feedback loop. Understand how this works. Because the more we understand how reality is made, the easier it is for us to create as God. 
real simple. <laughs> so um, I took these notes. Uh, the next lesson is going to be on forgiveness, but I really want us to take these weekend to practice these exercises to um, really start reprogramming our mind to understand these principles and to get us back into that sense that we are the creators of our own experience. Many of us are taught this. Many of this, many of us know this, and yet there's one thing that will knock us off our horse and that will make us feel as if we're helpless. Those are the initiations that we're getting back towards stepping back into our power. I just went through it myself. In fact, that's the reason why I decided to take us on this journey and to get us back onto where I was originally going is to remember that at all times, we are the creators of our experience. We are not victims. No matter how much it feels like sometimes we are, we are not. Everything is happening for us. Remember the story of the farmer, the farmer who wouldn't judge and who in the end, everything worked out for him, including when his son had broken his leg. And you would think that was a horrible thing until the army recruiter came and picked up every abled body and left the little boy intact with next to his father so that even when the broken leg appeared to be something horrible, it ended up working in his favor. But the only way we get to experience this sense of flow, even when things appear bad, is to reserve judgment. I want us to remember that when we judge things, we get stuck. When we are told, do not eat from that apple, it means don't judge the situation. The second you judge the situation, you are going to be stuck in that feedback loop in which your choice to judge allows you to step out of reality and get stuck into a 3D box. And then that, that feedback loop will continue. And that's how you guys get stuck, right? That's, we, that's where, where you're like, I don't know how to get out of here. Help. That's what I tend to specialize in. Um, but even I felt victim to feeling sorry for myself, for not remembering who I was, for being out of alignment, for questioning who I was, right? It's, it's a normal state, but I want us to get more and more into the habit of not judging, of keeping the innocence, of remembering that our body is a feedback loop, of understanding how we create our experience, because the closer we get to this understanding, the easier it is for us to simply declare something and allow it to be. And I know right now it doesn't feel that way. And so we come up with all these like manifestation hacks and all these little tools and all this stuff. That's only because we are judging things from a point of need. And we can't need anything in order to have freedom. So that's our lesson for today. I don't want it to make it too long because that wasn't my intention. Um, it will tie along with the exercises. Maria is helping me out here and tying our live videos with our, our files. It's going to be called the heart series for now. Um, and um, this is the concepts behind this. I'm also going to include the full lecture because I'm summarizing it for you guys in the comments so that you guys can listen along with me and know where this material is coming from. I love you guys. I really appreciate you coming on this journey with me. Please do follow the exercises. I'm doing them alongside with you. It is important for us to get back into that God state, to get back into peace, to get back into that sense of wonder. I want to get us all through the eye of the needle. That's the truth. We all deserve to get through the eye of the needle. That's where we're headed. That's what I really want for all of us. And it's, um, call it my mission. If my name means life ridge to heaven on earth, then it must be that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> so I'm back in alignment, you guys. I love you so much. I really appreciate you participating in this class and in this group. And let's really get back down to basics. Um, next lessons, I will um, maybe start on Monday. Um, give us time to let this stuff sink in. Um, I want to do these short increments. The next lesson is going to be on forgiveness. 
um, which is a fairly extensive topic too. So I'm going to figure out how to break these things down, but let's, let's really get back to basics and let's get back to declaring things into being and to create as God creates, because that's what we were made for. Let's get back in alignment, you guys. I love you and thank you again for participating. See you soon.